Hello once again everyone are back and if you watch last video you should know that uh, the boat is sinking now. So there are three metal doors on the sea deck, a single door stood off to the side with two more on the wall facing the central staircase. None of them had numbers or verification devices. They were they were, however, locked like the other doors. No matter how much they pushed and shoved, the doors refused to move. The mountain and the lion threw themselves against them a few times, but to no avail. The door in the back had a keyhole. Just above it was a strange mark in the shape of a circle surrounding a dot. There were two other doors on the sea deck as well, but it was clear they were elevators, as each had a button next to it with an upside-down triangle. They tried pushing the button. No response. Damn. Apparently there was no power running to the elevators. Well, there's the first problem. We gotta go fix the power. One of us is gonna get killed. And then we're all gonna get killed one by one by one. Uh, yeah. To the left of the elevator doors was a card reader. The card reader also had a strange mark on it. It looked like a lowercase h with a dash drawn across the upper stem of the h. Moonpie stared at it for a while. This is the symbol of Saturn. It's an astrological symbol. And the mark on the other door. I think that is the sun symbol. They had seen the same symbols on A deck. There was a door on either side of the stairs. The one on the left had a keyhole with a similar symbol engraved on it. This is the this is the Earth symbol. The horizontal line symbol is the equator, and the vertical line represents the prime meridian. Junpai looked up at the ceiling. There was a great circle cut in cut in it, but perhaps for a skylight or a glass dome, but it had been filled with a gargantuan metal plate. The metal looked very solid. Anything short of an explosive charge was likely to, was unlikely to damage it. There were several windows along both sides of the ship, or at least there had been. They too were covered with metal plates. In other words, we're trapped in. How did I guess that? All of the exits go nowhere. Junpai was not happy. The girl with the pink hair spoke up. Well, I'm sure they go somewhere. We just can't open them. Oh, fuck. Uh, then the mountain spoke. You don't know that. For all we know, they just open into walls or take us in circles. The prince did not agree. No, I'm sure they go somewhere. Otherwise, what point would there be? And we can open them. Well, the two of them, at least. You mean the numbered doors? All eyes turned towards the doors with numbers on them. The atmosphere in the room grew tense. Hey, wait a minute. I think I said this earlier, but I don't think we should do that. The dancer moved in front of the doors as if to block them. We'd have to be crazy to open these doors. If we do that, we're doing exactly what Zero wants us to do. Suddenly, everyone began to speak at once. I agree. I don't... That's a terrible idea. We should keep going. We should stay here. We don't have any other way to open any of these doors. We should just wait. Someone ba someone's bound to come find us. We don't have time for that. In eight and a half hours, the ship is going to sink. The clamor of voices made it next to impossible to determine who was saying what. Their arguments grew more and more intense until people were shouting and screaming at one another. Great teamwork, everybody. <sighs> Junpai had remained silent, but at last he could not take no he could take no more. Hey! Hey, shut up! They fell silent and all eyes turned to Junpai. He felt each stare burning into him, but he refused to flinch. Before we try and decide where we're going, where, where we're going to go, there's something else we ought to do. What's that? We need to exchange information. We don't know anything about each other. I want to know who you guys are, who you are, where you came from, why you ended up here. Don't tell me you are curious, too. They were silent. Someone looked the other way or a bit their lip or crossed their arms and stared at the ceiling. One of them spoke up. It was Akani. I agree. I think Jumpy is right. Jumpy? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about him. I just call him Jumpy. His name is Jumpy. 
She pointed towards June Pai. We're childhood friends. We went to the same elementary school. Wait, stop. Don't tell us stuff we didn't ask you about. Zero's probably watching us right now. What are you going to do if he's listening in? Would that be bad? Hell yeah, it would. We don't know how much the, that bastard knows about us. Maybe he just picked up a bunch of random people to kidnap. If that is the case, then it'd be dangerous for us to let him know too much. If Zero knows who we are, he could go after our families. Maybe he'd tell us he'd had him get had him to get us to do stuff, you know? But we still need to do need to know what our names are. It's going to be hard to tell to talk to each other if we don't have names. Alright, then why don't we have a code names? Ah. Oh. Him apparently it seemed like the obvious solution. Code names? Yeah, we all each pick something. Like, I'll be seven. Seven. Why are you seven? Seems a fair question. The man stuck out his left arm. Because this bracelet number says seven. Oh, I get it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, holy crap, Silver's not an asshole. He smirked. Alright, I'm gonna be Santa. Oh, fuck you. Any of you chums know Japanese? No? Well, San means three, so I'll be Santa. You? You know, like Santa Claus. Fits, don't you think? Then your bracelet number? Yeah, yeah, it's got a three on it. Good job, Grandpa. Asshole. Fucking asshole. Uh, just like the mountain had done, Silver thrust out his left hand. Sure enough, the face of his bracelet read three. Just needed to make sure. Very well, then. I'll go next, shall I? My bracelet, num my bracelet number is one. Given that, I think Ace seems appropriate. I'll be Lotus then, as I'm sure you all know, it has eight petals, which means, of course, that my bracelet number is eight. I would appreciate it if you would call me Snake. No, you're not getting the title of Snake. You're not getting that title. Single ace has chose since ace has chosen cards and I choose dice, snake eyes, clearly, which is particularly irrelevant given that I am blind. Oh, you're blind? God. Really? He kept his eyes closed during their entire ordeal, ordeal which had suggested something strange, but to hear it said so casually, it was something of a surprise. Everyone seemed a little nervous at the prince's proclamation, but no one seemed to know how to react to it. There was one person, however, who didn't seem to be surprised in the least, the girl with the pink hair. I want to be Clover. You know, like four-leaf Clover? Good luck, right? Looking almost bored, she held out her left hand. The face of her bracelet showed the number four. And they come around to Junpai. He held out his bracelet. Alright, my number's five, so my code name is gonna be... I have one. It's not like there's any point to it now. Dancer cut him off in mid-sentence. I mean, we all know your name already. You're Junpai. Yeah. <laughs> they all nodded. Akane stepped forward nervously. Then you should call me by my name too, because I mean, it doesn't seem it doesn't seem fair to fair to Jumpy. They're thinking it's not cool for you to hide your name after he told us his. Akane fidgeted awkwardly. Junpai decided he had to do something. It's what's your bracelet number? It's six. Fucking miss that. Uh, she hesitated for a moment, then held out her left hand. As she claimed, the bracelet's face showed a six. Junpai looked at it for a moment and thought, "All right, then why don't we call you June?" June? Yeah, you know it's the sixth month of the year, so you're June. Jumpy. Connie needed needed her hands and looked up at Junpai uncertain. He smiled back at her reassuringly. Are you good with that? She thought about it for a few minutes, a few more minutes, then seemed to come to a decision and gave Junpai a small nod. <sighs> the names decided. Junpai ran over to them, ran over them quickly in his head. One was Ace, two was Snake, which I don't agree with. Three was Santa. Four was Clover. Five was Junpai's number. Akane was six, and Junpai had given her code name as of June. Seven was seven. Originality there. And eight was Lotus. That meant that eight of them, including Junpai, had revealed their bracelet numbers. But there was still one person left. He was a man with the, with glasses and hair like a bird's nest. He 
He hadn't said anything since they met on the stairs, and he didn't look like the sort of person who was inclined to conversation. His skin was pale, his breathing was heavy, and he was soaked with nervous sweat. His behavior seemed very suspicious, or perhaps simply emotionally unstable. It was difficult to tell. Whatever the case, it seemed clear that he had only a fingertips with a grip on his sanity. The girl with the pink hair, Clover, walked up to him slowly. She put her hands on her hips and eyed him suspiciously. What number are you? He didn't answer. His bloodshot eyes twitched from person to person and his breath came in hot pants. Okay, so he's obviously high. I don't really know what else to say. Hey, I'm talking to you. The man licked his dry lips with a shaking tongue and spoke with a voice like old paper. Uh, isn't it ob obvious? There are nine people here. And you know number w no, numbers one through eight are? I'm the only one left. So you're nine? Yeah. He extended a trembling arm. His bracelet did indeed say nine. Clover looked at it contemptuously. What's your code name? G code name? What do you want us to call you? If we all made up names, you should too. Uh, I don't need one. Why not? Why not? Because I'm not gonna stay here. With you. He took a shuddering breath and exhaled. Clover looked at him with something very like disgust. You got some sort of plan? I do. Yeah, what's that? You sure you wanna know? Yeah. Alright. Let me show you. I'm going to do this. I. By the time they realized what he was doing, it was too late to stop him. The man's body moved like a snake's. In the blink of his eye, he had slid around behind her and wrapped his arm around her waist. Hey, what the hell are you? What the hell do you think you're doing? Silver, not, I mean Santa, left forward towards the clover and the knife man. Okay, I'm gonna end the video here. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I get ready to watch the murder next episode. Bye.